On this episode of the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast, a man sues Hardee's over his hash rounds, AOC talks about toilet water, and we talk about our vacation. All that and more on this episode of the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast. Here we go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast, where it's two guys' take on life, liberty, and the pursuit of gravy, and you, the listener, are getting a degree in common sense. We are broadcasting from the Busted Knuckles studio right here in beautiful downtown historic Concord, North Carolina. I'd be your host, Biggin, and how about you? We've got a great show lined up for you, as always. But before we begin, let me introduce you to the second half of this flaky biscuit. That's right, I'm talking about the pride of Anderson, South Carolina, but most of you probably know one best as the Silver Tongue one, 2016's Honorable Mention Father of the Year, the inventor of the redneck egg roll. Give it up on old mic number one, it's Mojo! Wow, thanks for tuning back in. I know we took a week off. I'm glad to be back. In <sighs> Yeehaw! Good, good week of respite. Mm-hmm. Anyway, you could go to our Facebook page at Southern Fry Philosophy. You can also go to our website at southernfryphilosophy.com. You can go to any of the podcast places you pretty much can listen to us. Uh, just go there. Spotify, iHeart, Podbean, Podcast, Pocket Cast. Yeah, all the all the major Spotify. Players. I think I said Spotify. Google. Anyway, pretty much any of yeah. them that you can imagine. We're on iHeart also. Mm-hmm. Just go there. <clears throat> look us up at Southern Fry Philosophy. Uh, give us a like, a uh, share, a uh, review on, if you do the iTunes. Uh, give us one of those and, um, yeah, share those favorite episodes. You can also follow us on the YouTubes at youtube.com forward slash SFP radio. I, I'm pretty sure we have some exciting news that we'll be doing some more live video uh, once mm-hmm. we get moved to a new studio. Dum, so, dum, dum. so YouTube and Facebook Live, we'll be trying to uh, utilize those. Yeah. And, um, yeah, as we move forward and march forward with taking our show to the next level, I anticipate. Yeah. I think, I hope. <laughs> so yeah, just check us out there at those avenues, and uh, you can also follow us on the Twitters and Instagram at SFP Radio, and uh, our Patreon link at Patreon dot com forward slash SFP Radio. Yep. Um, as Mojo mentioned, uh, we do want to take the show to the next level, and we cannot do that without uh, Patreon subscribers like you. So please um, check out our link on our website. It is free to you, but it is not free to us. So for us to continue to move forward, we ask that you just, you know, throw us a couple bucks every month. That would be fantastic. If you do $5, that'll get you the life tier. Uh, 15 will get you the liberty, and the 20 will get you gravy. Uh, who doesn't want gravy? I mean, come on. It's 20 bucks a month. That'll get you access to uh, some uh, exclusive content. You get the, the show a day early, a hat, shirt, stickers. Uh, I even picked up some coasters this week. So you can put your... Are they the nice, like, marble? No, they're no. just the paper ones. Paper ones. But, that works. You know, you can put your, <laughs> your drink on it. <laughs> Limited <laughs> Those use. Those type of things, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're guaranteed good for a solid 25 times. Uh, so, yeah, just uh, help us out. Go to Patreon and uh, be a subscriber. We want to say what's up to our new listeners from Marshville, North Carolina, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and Theodore, Alabama. How about you? I've only been to one of those. Actually, I've been to two. I've been. Have Mar- you? I actually have been through through Marshville. Okay, and I've been uh, to Milwaukee. No, look at you. I've, have you been I've, to Theodore, Alabama? If, if Theodore is anywhere on the highway and mm. you just kind of pass through it, I'm sure oh. I have. <laughs> nice. Um, hey, we want to take just a few minutes before we get started. Our upcoming guest scheduled for next week is Matt Jones from Kentucky Sports Radio. He is a hero, an idol of mine, um, but things may change. We just found out earlier today that a um, a very good friend of Kentucky Sports Radio and the University of Kentucky, Jared Lorenzen, passed away today. Um, so that may curtail Matt so from being on too. the show. Only 38. 38 of kidney and heart failure. Um, big wake up call for, for a lot of folks. Um, man, he was such uh, the heartbeat, no pun intended, of Kentucky football. Um, and he's going to be sorely missed. He the hefty lefty. The Pillsbury throw boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, who has a better sports nickname in all of sports? That's fantastic. I, 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 I mean, that's that's the top one, I think. I don't know if you can get any better than that. That's right. It beats out Refrigerator Perry. I, I can guarantee right, that, you that. That's so simple. Yeah. Yeah, Pillsbury Throwboy. 
Hands down. Yeah, so shout out. If you want to throw up some prayers uh, for his family, that would be much appreciated. Um, Mojo, I'm going to ask you like I ask you every week. How you be darn? Getting back in the saddle, as we said early in the show here, mm-hmm. uh, you, you go on vacation. Um, you spend a week relaxing. Well, sometimes, yeah. you know, sometimes you need a week after your vacation. It just depends on what <laughs> sure. type of plans you have. Uh, usually my wife has this plan for uh, doing something in 15-minute increments, so you have nothing really <laughs> wow. to do. Yeah. Um, also, the brunt of the, the driving falls upon my shoulders, mm-hmm. which, you know, nine, nine and a half hours straight. Uh, yeah. While she sleeps for nine hours and ten minutes of it, hey, but she she knocks out that other twenty. How about you? <laughs> no, she doesn't. Oh she no, doesn't. no, she stays awake. Oh, I'm awake now. If you need me to drive, <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. I Does it go that. back and forth? Like I'm awake, and then she'll fall back asleep. I'm awake. No, when she back. when she's when she's down, she's down. She's down. Yeah, she don't all get back all up. the girls are sleeping, but yeah. Mm-hmm. So you, you almost need a like I said. You almost some vacations you almost need a, a, a vacation to recover. But mm-hmm. luckily, this one was just seven days of relaxing mm-hmm. and uh, something. You know, we're not used to, especially in my kind of personality. I'm not used to just sitting around not doing anything. Yeah, so that was awesome. Uh, but yeah, getting back into kind of the business swing of things, you still, I still haven't gotten back there yet. Yeah, and of course we get back and we have a holiday this week, so that yep. kind of just kind of throws yeah. that off, doesn't it? Another another speed bump in the uh, old path trying to get back into things. So, <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm I'm a little more tanned in certain parts you of my are. body. How about it? Yeah, certain parts of my body. I mean, if I take my shirt off here, we'll still Let's not still probably that. blind you. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's a <laughs> just good time. How you be doing? I'm I'm good. The same thing, man. We uh went on vacation. We had ten days off, so we enjoyed that. The takeoff was fantastic. The landing coming back was a little bumpy. There's a lot of storms, uh, probably. There were. Yeah, because I know several people had flights delayed, mm-hmm. and uh, so I'm sure you guys were probably caught up in that weather pattern too. Yeah, uh, the bad thing is we drove, so <laughs> we did. We'll scratch off of that. <laughs> we drove. It was. It it's w- always easier to get down there because you're anticipating, it. but getting back, you're just. It seems like it takes twice as long. Well, it, normally that's the case. In, in this case, I was so tired. And just wanted to be back home so much, I was just kind of willing the car to move forward. Right. So I was I was hoping that that kind of helped uh, helped the process. But same same thing. You you get back in. Luckily, we had uh, we came in on a Saturday from uh, it was Saturday Sunday morning. It was like midnight when we got in. Mm-hmm. We were able to have a little bit of respite before we had to go pick up kiddo. Um, so the, we picked him up around five. So we had a little bit of time where we could like chill and watch Handmaid's Tale Threw a couple loads of laundry in before, uh, before he came back and that's nice. Cause I was at church was. first thing the next day. I appreciate that. Oh, by wow. myself. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> My wife wasn't. She My was, bad. Yeah, she was sleeping. You know, you are just the epitome of church goers. Dedicated. You are. Dedic- just uh, that's what I love dedicated. about you. Yeah. Straight up dedicated. <laughs> All right, so we are going to go to our podcast question of the week. Uh, Mojo, you you put this one out there. What's the craziest thing that you've ever seen driving? Um, well, bad habits, you know, uh, like a, a, okay. bad, a bad habit while someone's uh, driving. Okay. Let me actually read the whole question. Yeah, so do it. It says, what is the weirdest behaviors you've witnessed another driver do while in traffic? So we've had uh, several listeners uh, um, respond to this. So, uh, arguing with uh, what appeared to be thin air, uh, bef- I guess before Bluetooth, it mm-hmm. kind of was extra, does that, ex- extra funny. Does that freak you out when you still does? We are walking in like the grocery store and somebody's talking, and you're like, "Who is this?" Oh yeah, it's oh still, yeah. Well, it's because you know, 20 years ago it was called schizophrenia. You know, <laughs> right. Now it's just called Bluetooth. So you, you and you're trying to decipher which one it is still. Yeah, so. maybe that's that Bluetooth's not even connected to anything. They're just, they're just yeah. asking. <laughs> uh, one of our Patreon su- uh, subscribers, Ryan Ray, says shaving. Ooh, uh, I hope I hope that wasn't a straight razor. That would have been bad. <laughs> we had another listener said uh, someone reading a book. A, tra- a transferred truck driver says reading a book. Wow, that'd be. I mean, you, you're carrying what forty tons of stuff there. Or whatever. Might as well. Hey, you never finished you gotta, great expectations in high school. Yeah. You got to do it now. Got to catch up on that war and peace. <laughs> Applying mascara. Yeah. Okay. That's another one. I'll give you that. Tweezing their eyebrows. Now that takes talent. That does. Yeah, takes down. I'm surprised I'm not seeing like putting on makeup, but I'm assuming that that's just a normal habit. Nor, yeah, because I mean, that's what they on. teach you in driver's ed uh-huh. is to apply makeup. Yeah. So, do you have any crazy? Um, I'm going to say that 
at one time, <clears throat> I'm not 100% certain, but I'm 95% certain that I saw uh, some people having some hello time mm. while they were driving. Okay. Now, I don't know if that's their habit or not, but that's probably the craziest thing that I've seen driving. Uh, there's probably been people that have actually, we probably have seen that, but just not have noticed it, you know, because you're... Not yeah, attention. So I was up a little higher, and they were in a in a lower car. Right, right. And I just happened to glance over, and hey, buddy, blanket on his lap. I gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess what prompted this question was mm-hmm. today. I was uh, actually heading into the shop this morning. So, and uh, there's a highway that you have to take 77, which is pretty much a you know a moving parking lot for the most part. It's been and dubbed as the highway to hell. It has a now has a toll road. Um, mm-hmm. which no one utilizes. So it's <laughs> had, you know, great use of independent <laughs> private funds from Spain. Sure. Uh, but that's another subject for another day. But anyway, <laughs> so I, I'm driving, you know, I'm going probably 35 because traffic's just back. You're flying up. on yeah. 75. Uh, that's right. Yeah. So it's, it's early. You know. So um, <laughs> You're letting her eat. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I, I look over my right window because I'm in the quote unquote fast lane uh-huh. at the time, which. Oh, buddy. was probably doing 35. And like I said, the other lane was probably doing 32. Yeah. Anyway, so I look in over and I see a lady who has a very s- slender, nice looking leg just sitting upon her dash. Whoa. Like in a, you know, please don't. In, in a, uh, in a crooked position, you know, like, you know, in a, in a bent position. Right. Uh, sitting up on, you know, her left leg sitting up. And I'm left like, leg. Left leg sitting up. But I guess we're by, or maybe an air conditioned vent would be. Okay. So I'm like, this just don't. I mean, number one, I'm like, how do you do that? Sure. Because I, I'm not that uh, flexible to be able to do that. No, not at all. And then I, I noticed her, like, ha- she had something in her hand, and she was mm-hmm. waving it around. She was electric <laughs> electric shaving her legs. <laughs> I hope that's what it was. Um, no, it was. I mean, this is like the old classic grandpa electric shaver. Just, just They're just <laughs> weed-eating the old legs there. <laughs> weed-eating them. <laughs> I, I argue of how smooth can that get it? I've never been able to use a an electric shaver where it's it's been good enough to I would assume put pantyhose on or something like it would just it'd still be rough. I don't think they wear pantyhose anymore, do they? I've seen it. I mean, because it, when's the last time you've been to like a, a store with it? You know, because back in the day, your moms would get like the egg, mm. the Hayton's egg or whatever that had like the or the legs. You know, oh yeah, and the egg would be like a gi- you know ginormous ostrich egg. So, oh, that's right. So you don't see that anymore. You know what I did see though that uh, on the trip when we went on the Bourbon Trail. Do you remember those uh, <laughs> those games where you would put a quarter in and it was filled with like Easter eggs? Oh yeah. And then it would it was like the chicken thing and the chicken would like go around in the circle and go Gawk! and then, right. and then pop one. I actually saw one of those on the Bourbon Trail. Where, we, where did you see that? At that uh, pizza place that I went to to go pick up that pizza. Oh. They had one of those chicken things. I was like, I've never. I, it's been so long since I've seen that thing. It probably has a total of seventy-five cent in it from nineteen eighty-two. <laughs> but I also remember the ostrich egg with the uh, pantyhose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know, you, you, the I lady mean, would get that, that and hand you the egg, and you'd go put like twenty-seven GI Joes in it or whatever. So, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. so she, she was wow. shaving her legs. So, uh, if you happen to listen to us, I, ma'am, I. <sighs> Number one, I, I implore you to message the show because I'd love to talk to you. Yeah, no, I got to give her a shout out. Good job, way to way to go, lady. <laughs> Number two, yeah, I mean we need we need to do like a how to video on YouTube. I think mm-hmm. that would go viral of uh, how to shave your legs while driving, <clears throat> whilst driving. Yeah. Would would you and I be participating in that, or would we just have somebody else that can do that? Do that. Well, I, well, maybe she could do a how to, and then we would uh, see if we could actually follow the instructions. Lord. <clears throat> We're going to have to get a, you're going to have to find at auction a cheap car that will allow me just to run it off the road. Well, we can start, <laughs> we can start in a parking lot first. Just to see. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, that was the weirdest behavior. Weird, wow. One of the weirdest How ones. about you? I've seen some weird ones, but that one. That was it. I, I think that just the Top uniqueness of, the list of yeah. there, huh? Well, how about you? Um, all right. Well, speaking of weird, let's go to our wacky news brought to you by Webmerized. If you need a clean, crisp website, go check out our friends at Webmerized.com. That's Webmerized.com. Ooh, bringing it close to home in Mount Holly, North Carolina, a North Carolina man sues Hardee's over meager hash rounds order, claims that his civil rights were violated. 
uh, in the lawsuit, the handwritten lawsuit, mind you, Tommy Martin of Mount Holly claimed that the fast food chain restaurant violated his civil rights by giving him a smaller than normal quantity of the hash rounds that he ordered. The 58 year old who was black alleged that his skin color led him to be served fewer fried, uh, the served fewer of the fried potato breakfast items. He filed the lawsuit Friday in the U S district court of Charlotte. Um, <clears throat> here's the, so we haven't even read the kicker yet. <clears throat> um, he is stating in his lawsuit that the incident made him feel stupid and quote, gave him a fear of food, a fear of food. I'm, I'm trying to think if I can even see any logic in this. Money's not an issue. He just wanted to be treated fairly. <clears throat> He's suing again because he didn't get enough hash rounds. Can I tell you that every time I go through Hardee's, I feel like I don't get enough hash rounds. I love the hash rounds. They're one of my favorites. I would take the hash rounds over the bow rounds. Oh, absolutely, because they're they get crispier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also I think Hardy's kind of actually changed the game with hash rounds. Yeah, or hash browns, hash round browns, hash rounds. Yeah, um, because now Chick Fil A has the said Mm -hmm. hash browns. So I think they kind of game changed like the breakfast uh, starch item with with that. Yeah. Um, But as far as this guy, uh, Tommy, (laughs) Tommy, um, y'all. I mean. You lost me a skin color because you, they take they take an order. It depends if you're going through the drive through, right? It it does not specify if you went through the drive through, so or stood in right. Line. So um, if you go through a drive through, number one, uh, do you, they don't see you, mm-hmm. so they have no clue who you are, right? So the, the car you drive, the skin that you have on, mm-hmm. the, the the sex that you think you are that day has no. It does not factor into the fact of of what you order for your breakfast item or how many they give you. Mm-hmm. So, okay, but if he walked in, um, these people are paid minimum wage or a little over. I doubt they really cared if you're black or white. And being in Mount Holly, you had a probably pretty good chance of being served or cooked, food cooked by maybe a black individual also. So I don't... I don't see where you're going with this, Tommy. I, obviously, I, I, no money. <laughs> I mean, come on. You have an angle here, buddy. Again, I go to the point of there's never been a time where I've left Hardee's. I ate my breakfast meal and have said, they just gave me too many hash rounds. I'm not going to finish them. Yeah. I yeah. love them. They, oh, yeah. could, they could pile the whole bag they full. They go way too fast. And I still feel like I could eat the rest of them. Oh, it's like it's like a it's like a tater top, but maybe a quarter version of a tater top. Right. That's a that's a perfect version of it. And then it, it like you said, they're smaller and they fry up a little bit crispier than like the the bow rounds or the Chick-fil-A. But it the fact that he that it said that he gave him a fear of food, that that's the other part. So is he just not going to eat anymore? Yeah, well, you is think he... they're putting like eyelashes and dog tails in it? I mean, I don't understand well, the whole the fear yeah. of food thing. I mean, I, I love me some hash rounds. I, I'm I'm also betting that he did not uh, think that this would actually go viral. Well, <clears throat> yeah, probably. He's and it was handwritten, so I don't know if he's got a law degree or whatnot, or he just said I'm I don't like. The number of hash rounds I yeah. got. Wiki- Here Wiki- you go. Wikipedia, how do I uh, <laughs> file a lawsuit for something that's absolutely asinine? <clears throat> do you know it takes a customer three seconds to decide whether to stay or leave your website? That's why a crisp, clean, and user-friendly website is one of the best ways to market and help and grow your business. At Webmerized Web Design, we offer that and much more. They pride themselves in offering their clients professional websites at affordable prices. Are you a small business? No problem. We can cater to small businesses by working with their clients every step of the way to meet their needs and expectations. Their number one goal is to partner with their clients to help and grow their business with a successful website. They work for every client, no matter the size. So if you'd like a great website, go to webmerize.com, W-E-B-M-E-R-I-Z-E-D.com, or you can check out their link on the sponsors link of our website. If you mention the word big and you'll get 10% off your website design order. Again, webmerize.com. Check them out. Speaking of asinine, a Texas woman is banned from a Walmart because she ate a half of the cake in the store and demanded that said cake be half price. 
Mm. <laughs> a Walmart in Texas has banned an unidentified woman from the store after she refused to pay for she's supposed to she refused to pay full price for a cake that she ate half of before making it to the register. Um can I just tell you, she ate half a cake before uh, yeah. she got to the register. That's off to her right there. That's, Congratulations, yeah. ma'am. But see, was it a half a cake or a half of a half a cake? Because you know that sometimes uh, places like grocery mm, stores and Walmart's sure. will actually make a half a cake that you can buy. This says it was a full cake. Wow. I mean... <laughs> It'd be more impressive also if it was a full-size sheet cake. <laughs> I wish it would specify that. Um, the Jeez. officers arrived, and the wo- the woman was uh, allegedly forced to pay for the whole cake, and she was banned from the store. Do you think that she brought in her own utensils? That's the question mm. that I have. How did she get said cake from the carton to her mouth? Mm. She probably she probably used some device provided by Walmart. I'm sure. You think so? Oh, absolutely. Or do you think she just went hand in? She could have done hand in, and or, or just she probably went over to the cutlery section, opened up a box of Martha Stewart uh, forks, and just had at it. Maybe. I mean, who knows? Um, the the other part is this is not the only incident that has happened at this particular Walmart. Uh, back in January, another woman was banned from the same store. <laughs> I mean, after she. She drank wine from a Pringles can and then spent, quote, several hours riding around the store's parking lot using their electric scooter. The same Walmart. <laughs> the same Walmart. Now, no no uh, jab on Walmart no, or Walmart no. employees. <laughs> but, man, Walmart. <laughs> from a Pringles can. <laughs> Walmart is probably the most interesting retail store in America currently oh, right now. Sure. It doesn't matter which one you go to. I saw the most interesting people in the world. I saw, I saw a post of people just going to a Walmart and they said, we simply came here just for the entertainment value. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and they'll it's just a sit, cheap day. They'll just walk around Walmart and just look at people. Absolutely. Evidently you can eat a cake. I mean, you may have to pay for the whole cake, <laughs> but you, but you can at least eat like dessert. <laughs> right. And if, if you go to the Walmart that has a rotisserie chicken, you probably can make a dinner out of it and just walk oh, around yeah. watching people. And then, you know, of course pay for your food, but sure. Um, yeah. Walmart, what an interesting cross section <laughs> of society, you know. From a Pringles can, yeah. though. I mean, yeah, that's did, pretty did genius. They, uh, did she bring the Pringles can in, or it did does she? Does not say yeah, that. I'm, I'm kind of curious. I wonder about if she that. ate the Pringles and then used yeah. the box wine, and then. But also, what flavor Pringles can would you use? Because you don't want to get like a ranch flavor. Or that's something, a good you know, one. Or the hot and spicy, and then try to drink wine. Mm-hmm. It's got to be plain. You don't I want sour imagine. cream and onion. Mm. No, sir. Some of those hearty flavors. Yeah, you don't yeah. want those. No. Ugh. That would be gross. Um, what do you do? You have a hang up of people that eat their food while they're in the grocery store. Yeah, I don't like that, uh, especially things that's weighable. You know, like for oh, example, yeah. you'll you'll see like a parent grab a a bag of grapes just by the pound, and mm-hmm. the, the kid will just hammer down on them the whole time. I understand now the the parents trying to keep their kid quiet, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I mean the grocery stores have to earn or keep, you know, I mean, they, they have a lot of real estate they have to heat and cool and poise yeah. and, and, you know, real estate they have to pay for. So, I mean, don't be like scrimping you know, off grapes. You know, are you going to save what, 29 cent or something like that? It just, that drives me nuts. Do you ever just get a couple of grapes just to see if they taste good? Yeah, I'll do that because I don't want to commit to the whole thing. Right. Like you, uh, a couple of years ago, they came out with this new cotton candy grape. Wait, what? Yeah, there was a grape that's flavored like cotton candy. I haven't seen them since. It may, may be seasonal. Uh, but, um, yeah, cotton candy flavored grape. And I, I tried one. I was like, man, and I fully committed to buying several containers of it. So I, the one the one that got me was the, the grapeple. It was an apple that tasted like a grape. Yeah. And I was so excited about it that I started eating it at the store. Realized I didn't like it. Mm. But then I still paid for the whole sure. thing. Sure. Um, but it freaks me out when I see people eating oh, yeah. at the grocery store. Yeah. I'm like, are you going to? Now, samples that? are different. Like, you know, they have sure. a sample station. Because, you know, we went to Co- the new Costco today Ooh. in Mooresville. How about and, you? And, uh, yeah, you have sample people all down the aisle. And, of course, right. it, was fun. It, it was great times just watching my youngest daughter because she pretty much only eats 
anything that's made of cheese and starch. Mm-hmm. And he drinks water and milk. Mm-hmm. So she's wanting to go tra- tra- uh, try like kam- kombucha tea. Oh. And she it, just to watch her face like put it in her mouth and, oh, and then trying to find the closest trash can. So that mm-hmm. was that was just kind of good humor for me and my oldest daughter. Oh, that's daughter. good. So yeah, we 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 thoroughly enjoyed ourselves there. Yeah, the Costco is like the high the high end Walmart. Yeah, that yeah. you buy in bulk. That you that you got to have you know the membership for. Oh yeah, yeah. They don't let just they just don't let the regular riffraff in. You got to pay for to pay to get in. How do you feel about those dollar hot dogs? At it's dollar fifty there. Ooh, mm. dang, they went up. Hey, you know if they, they want to use that as a loss leader to keep people in. Mm-hmm. I mean, they they they're, they're they're a good quality. I yeah. mean, like I know Sam's uses Nathan's, I believe. Oh, do they? And uh, I miss a de- decent quality hot dog, and I, I'm pretty sure um, Costco uses a, a decent hot dog too. So hey, yeah, I mean, um, you know, there's a guy out there uh, who has a website, blog, and a radio show <laughs> who does talk about saving money, uh-huh. and he recommends going to Costco all the time to eat lunch. Oh yeah, so, I mean, you get like a dollar fifty hot dog. Maybe you can eat pizza there for like two bucks. I mean, yeah. So if you're if you're watching your money and you know trying to save some pennies, I mean that's a place to go. We have some friends I won't name names that have, that bought, well that that gets a season pass for Carowinds, mm-hmm. and it, it also includes the the food package. Mm-hmm. Um, so they'll go have I mean, like on a Friday, they'll go down, but their whole main thing is they'll eat their Friday meal at Carowinds, and then they'll ride a few rides and go home. But their whole point is they. They're going down just to just eat. to eat lunch or dinner or what have you. Interesting. So how about you? I don't know if I want to make that track that far to do that, but, you know. I don't think I would want to eat the food and then get on the rides. I don't think I want to drive all the way down there, find myself a space to park in yeah. and walk all the way into the, yeah. the, the amusement park just to eat a meal. I get frustrated when I have to walk, I have to park in the parking deck here in downtown Concord and walk to Gianni's. I get, fru- like, ah. I get frustrated when my kids want me to go through McDonald's for breakfast and I have to sit in that stupid line with people going, uh, yes, yeah, sir, I don't know. Uh, we, we, we misunderstood you wanted pancakes, but we really didn't think you wanted pancakes. So well, I'm sorry, Miss, I mean, I know you're making minimum wage, but hey, yeah, I mean, we ordered pancakes. I mean, what part? I mean, just wow. idi- idiocracy. But yeah, I, I, I have no patience for that. So mm. I could imagine driving all the way down there, which is 30 minutes from where we're at. Right. 45 minutes or maybe an hour on some days yeah. just to park, eat, and then ride and leave. I just, yeah. That doesn't make sense. I mean, but hey, if that's what they like to do, then. Let them, let them yeah. be. Uh, speaking of things that they like to do, did you see Alex Morgan, uh, the World Cup uh, lady? Uh, the world, the, the women's U.S. team, they beat England. Right. How about you? Uh, very apropos for the week of the fourth. Right. I mean, we're like, what, 2-0 and against England in July? Yeah. How about you? But she made, the, the reason why I bring that up in Wacky News is she made the the little uh, English tea, tea, tea English sign, tea yeah. sign yeah. there. I thought that was pretty good. Way to go. Now she's being accosted on the uh, oh. social medias for that. Y'all. Yeah, oh yeah. Some people said it looked like she was smoking a doobie, the old devil's lettuce. <laughs> that would have been against Jamaica. Right, sure. What do you think? You think that was that was good, like, ha-ha, I got you? In in politics, probably not. Uh, <laughs> but in, in the game of sport, it's what it is. It's sport. I mean, it's just it's, it's just a gesture. I mean, if people get people get butt hurt over the stupidest things these days. And it's yeah. Just, it's almost, I, I mean... Sometimes I just want to grab a, a piece of land in a shack in Wyoming and just camp out to the end of the world. <laughs> I mean, sometimes. Because people get so offended about everything. Yeah. Man. It's crazy. Well, you know, some people thought it was, you know, a, a jab at the uh, the Boston Tea Party, them drinking the tea, and she's like, no. Well, maybe it's it just, is. You maybe know, it is. Even who, if it is. Who cares? I mean, that was a good one, though. Yeah. I'll give you that. Yeah. I mean, to, you know, we're coming up on July 4th, our mm-hmm. independent state yep. here in the States. And um, obviously England doesn't celebrate that day. No. No. <laughs> so, they're not. I mean, come on. They're not going to enjoy that as much as we do. Um, all right. So let's go into some hot topics brought to you by Watchman Cigars. Uh, and just for our legal uh, battle, here we go. The views and opinions of Southern Fried Philosophy are not necessarily those of our guests, sponsors, or friends of the show. But they should be. Did you watch the uh, Democratic debate, the two night spectacular? Um, no, I didn't. But um, I read a brief transcript. 
You read the transcript? A brief transcript. Basically, the highlights. The cliff notes. The cliff. Oh, man, I love me some cliff notes. Mm, they're I, awesome. I'm, I, I graduated high school on cliff notes. So <laughs> that's that's actually pretty. a boy. Yeah, that's pretty appropriate there. Um, no, it's uh, it's pretty much uh, uh, the, the free debate. Who mm. can give the most free things? I, you know, mm. I... And also speaking in Spanish, like how many candidates could speak in Spanish and talk about free things? Mm-hmm. I mean, hey, the, the season of the season of uh, uh, tr- whoever's going to try to win the Democratic primary has just begun. And yeah, man, it's going to be. I, I'm just. I want to make my popcorn and watch. I was going to play a little game. Uh, I, I was at my aunt and uncle's, so we we're not allowed to partake of, of the alcohol. Uh, but I was going to play a game of. And even if I did play the game of how many times does uh, Yang get to talk and take a shot every time he mm. got to talk, I still would have not even opened the bottle. <laughs> I mean, dude only got like three chances. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not for I'm I'm not for UBI or universal ba- basic income. There's a libertarian who came out with the UBI back in the 70s. Okay. Now I've I've done some research with that, and I can be I could possibly you can be convinced with that as far okay. as how it would be implemented. But um, Andrew Yang, um, I'm interested in what he has to say. He's he's one of the only ones who actually interests me in what he has to say. Good luck because he's not talking during yeah, the but debates. The, but the thing <laughs> is, though, he I think the debates are almost almost antiquated now. I think I think that. Um, more people will gravitate towards podcasts or towards social media or alternative media outlets mm-hmm. to find out what these candidates actually have to say. Like, for example, uh, Andrew Yang. Andrew Yang has broke bread with Joe Rogan, mm-hmm. who has one of the largest podcasts in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, he also went on Dave Rubin, who is a uh, former liberal, uh, on-the-fence kind of conservative guy. Mm-hmm. He went on his show. Other other candidates... Uh, have been invited on these shows and a lot of them have turned it down. So and for the record, we've also invited him to come on our show. I would love to have Andrew. I Yang. have not yet yeah. heard, heard a response. I would love to have him. I on. really just, did. I invited him. Nice. On. I would love to have him on just because yeah. um, I'm interested in what he has to say. Yeah. He's, sure. he has an interesting story yeah. um, in a, in the history here. So I'm, I'm, I'm in honestly, genuinely actually concerned or care what he has to say. Yeah. Um, some of the other blowhards who have been in government for, you know, 20 plus, mm-hmm. you know, like Biden's been there for 50, 50 years. And he really accomplished absolutely <laughs> right dirt. I mean, so what, what makes us think he's going to change something next for the yeah. next four years? I there mean, was, there were some personal attacks from Kamala on, on Mr. Biden. I mean, Kamala has <clears throat> no room to talk. She slept her way to the top. That, well, and, and there's been a lot of people that have questioned how she got to where she is, uh, as you say, but then also while she was in uh, her job, also being very um, political and and not supportive of the African American community right. while she was in office. So yeah, but even her own father, her own parents have have questioned her mm. legitimacy. Like mm. for example, that she is nothing. That's really bad. Oh, your yeah. own parents do that. Look, I mean, <laughs> you know, if if. I'm sure my own parents would probably call me out for something if I wanted to run, sure. p- do a certain thing in life that mm-hmm. maybe negated how I've lived the previous 42 years of my life. I'm right. sure they would probably, I know my dad would, my dad would stand up and say, look, son, I mean, or and then if I'd continue to go down that path, he mm-hmm. would then probably go on to the public. I mean, yeah. you know I mean, just because that's my dad and I commend Kamala's, you know, uh, family for yeah. doing that mm-hmm. because, um, I, she's nothing but, looking for power has nothing sure. to do that. She's a woman. I would love to have a woman president. I don't think the time is right now because the, 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 the cream of the crap that the Democrats have skimmed up mm-hmm. to put in, in front of, in front of the voters. I, I don't think the time is now. Um, I, I could probably mention a handful of candidates. I would love to see run on a conservative ticket because I'm, I'm not a Republican. I'm, I would love to see a conservative ticket um, out there for females, but I just don't think she's it because she, she brings a lot of baggage, man. Um, yeah. She brings uh, the, with the, the, uh, the gossip and poss- potentially the, the truth of her sleeping her way to the top. And, um, you know, <laughs> man, I tell you what, when, when, when a candidate goes out and has a, rainbow sequin jacket made specifically for a pride rally 
you know she's pandering to an audience. It has nothing to do sure, that her, her yeah. heart is there. It has everything to do with the fact that she's trying to gain political points. So, like I said, it, it – from the everything I read on the debate is nothing but a free a free fest. Who's who's gonna give the most freebies? Then possibly they they would have the Democratic nod. Yeah, it, it was pretty evident of like Elizabeth Warren was one of the top leaders uh in that one. Uh Booker was also one on the first night. The second night you had Kamala that, that rose above uh Joe Biden. I think she's on the number two right now in the in the ratings. Yeah. Yeah. Uh and then uh Bo Boogly Boogly Boo, what's his name? Sister oh. Pete. <laughs> the, the werewolf man. Uh Bud- Buttigieg. Buttigieg. Yeah. Uh, dude looks like he's got a five o'clock shadow at like eight in the morning. Buttigieg, Buttigieg, Pierre, uh, Mayor Pete? Yeah, I'm pretty confident he's a werewolf. I'm I'm not trying uh, to slander him. Mayor, Mayor Pete, it looks like uh, the the I can't remember the guy's name off Mad Magazine. That's what he looks like. Mm, I'll let me let me throw up <clears throat> throw up a picture. He looks like he's got a, a five o'clock shadow all the time. Come on now. I mean, look at that. I mean, that's a a pretty thick. Hey, I just shaved because he's not going for. Well, one day when I grow up, I hopefully have that. Man, I wish I could have that. I can't yeah. grow it on the sides of my no, lips. I look, that drives me nuts. I, look, I can say this because I'm a former ke- uh, cancer patient, So, but I look like I have chemo going on <laughs> when, I, when I try to grow a beard. So. Uh, he was one of the top guys. Obviously, you've got um, <laughs> you've got uh, Biden. And then uh, did you see any of the, the comments from uh, Marion Williamson? Yeah, I've, I've read a few. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to uh, pull those up because the last line that she gives, you're just like, what in the world are you talking about? So here's here's her comment. Sorry we haven't talked more tonight about how we're going to beat Donald Trump. I have an idea about Donald Trump. Donald Trump is not going to be beaten just by insider politics talk. He's not going to be beaten just by somebody who has plans. He's going to be beaten by somebody who has an idea what this man has done. This man has reached into the psyche of the American people, and he has harnessed fear for political purposes. So, Mr. President, if you're listening, I want you to hear me, please. You have harnessed fear for political purposes, and only love can cast that out. So I, sir, I have a feeling you know what you're doing. I'm going to harness love for political purposes. I will meet you on that field, and, sir, I uh, will win. There we go. So love, love's going to do it. What is she even polling at right now? Like a negative five. See, and I, I, I will. I'm willing to bet that the further the Democratic process goes on, as far as the Democratic uh, uh, Party, love will eventually creep out, and dirty, bare knuckle, mud flinging politics will ensue. So I, I don't understand what she's even saying. She is one of the most incoherent <laughs> individuals I've ever read on Twitter. Who? Who? would be worse her or Pelosi like just tr- put them in a room together and that would be comedy gold this is one of those things the devil you know versus the devil you don't know well, and that's what she said about she's Trump a, too yeah she's an Hillary. author I mean like really I, honestly it, there's 700,000 podcasts in the world right now that'd be like us running up there for for a presidential candidate be like oh uh, we have Brandon McNeely here <laughs> podcaster I mean like she's an author I mean seriously like out of how many authors there currently are right now, I would I would rather vote for Jeremy White because he's an author uh, mm. than than this. Hey, one. he has made an impact in my little girl's life with his Estelle and Gustav. And there so we go. I, I would love. He's to. running on the platform of Estelle and Gustav. I would vote for him hand hands down over her any day. <laughs> right. Oh, but anyway, so that. <clears throat> We watched that. None of it made sense, coherent sense. My uncle screaming from the couch, well, tell me the plan for it and how you're going to pay for it. Mm. Again, one of those things that I, I also agree but with. See, there, you know, Andrew Yang, going back to Yang, Yang is the only one who actually offers up a recipe of how to bankrupt us properly mm. versus these other ones. Free, 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 free. We're going to take tax rich. Yeah, I mean, their math doesn't add up. It is yeah. like we we were joking before the show about toilet paper or paper tile math. Mm-hmm. This is what they're using. You know, you can't come up with $3 trillion when you're only bringing in $1.6 trillion every year in tax revenue. Mm-hmm. The, the math yeah. doesn't add up. No. And um, <laughs> that form of socialism eventually bankrupts 
an economy, and that's what happened yeah. to the Soviet Union. That's the reason why they were they were belly up, and people were standing in line for bread. Yeah. So, in uh, Venezuela, then another great example. Sure. So, I mean, yeah, we. Uh, I understand we we want to lift people up, but holy crap, how are we going to pay for it? Yep. No, I 100% agree with that. If if you give me a plan on how we can help people, and it's it's you know not going to bankrupt our country. I'm all for it. Let's help as many but, people as we yeah, can. Yeah, but the problem is, is that it's going to be a few selected people. I mean, sixty percent of America doesn't pay taxes already. Mm. Is it sixty? Six. It's like, oh, uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. The ten percent. I mean, ten percent of the population pays all the taxes. Wow. I, I did not know that. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. I mean, the the one percent that Bernie rails on and these other clowns rail on. I mean, they pay they pay a the, a lion share of taxes. So, and then if you lump anyone who makes one hundred fifty thousand dollars and above, they they're they're paying the lion's share of taxes corporately uh, for the government. So, um, but yeah, people. I mean, here's here's the math that the the Democrat Party has gotten us into, and I will. I have no problem throwing shade out there. That's what the kids call it against these days. <laughs> anyway, like. You know, I have a family member who earns $68,000 a year, mm-hmm. doesn't work a damn job. Wow. $68,000 a year in government benefits a year. Holy cow. She gets a tax refund, doesn't pay a damn dollar in, but gets almost $8,400 back a year. What? In taxes. Now, how does that math add up? It makes me not want to do my job. She, now, get, Get this. Sure. She lives in government housing. Okay. She eats government food or food provided by the government as far okay. as in, a, in an EBT card. She has government daycare in the form of ABC vouchers. She um, uh, she also has free tuition because she's a single mother. Hmm. Going to school? No, she signs up for a class, gets the check, buys a book, cashes the check. But not. Has, has the money. Not going. Okay. Um, and she gets a tax rebate every year. Now, how how does that math add up? Mm. It doesn't. Yeah. And people understand don't understand why I'm so frustrated at the government or frustrated at, yeah. at politics. Man, my own family members, my own family's guilty of it. Yeah. Because I have them in there. Goodness. And she's just one example that's of how many people on the dole. Yeah. Mm. Do you think that that's a typical issue? Or a typical scenario, or do you think that there's... Absolutely, because you know what? She will not marry her boyfriend because she will get less money. Mm. Absolutely. Is it a problem? Absolutely, because there's there's people with social services, government employees who make X amount of dollars a year below below what we we would value our time at, Mm -hmm. encourage people, well, if you don't do this, if you decide to go to a job and work over 10 hours a week, then you will cap out your resources and not be able to receive this. Is there a reason why she's not able to work? Well, I mean, technically, I think the doctors call it lazy. But I mean, is no, that, no, no, there's it, no technical there's reason. No, there's no there's reason no, why there's she doesn't. There's no health. There's no physicality. Hmm. There's nothing mental. She just wants to sit on her ass all day and eat crackers and watch TV. Wow. And I'm not saying that's everyone who's on benefits. I'm not saying right. that. Let's be very clear on that. There's yeah. generally people out there who who can use a hand, um, and that's the reason why people pay in taxes. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the reason why I don't pay in taxes, but that's the reason why there's a tax pool out there to mm-hmm. help people out there who cannot help themselves. Yeah. But you Which we're she, all for. If you, if you can't help. For the, for the people who can't. Right. Well, I, I, I will. I'm I'm actually at a cross section of it because I, I believe that philanthropy can also help that. I believe there's enough private organizations out mm-hmm. there that can help people, not government tax dollars. Yeah. Government wasn't set up that way. Yeah. Well, remember when Clinton went into office and he signed the right to work, mm-hmm. um, or you have to work to yeah. get your check, that kind of cleared up a little bit of things. And so and so and not. In some, yeah. So, um but yeah, there there's there I think there's a lot of people out there like that. There's yeah. there's mm-hmm. You know, when people talk about um, generational uh, poverty, mm-hmm. a lot of that's that because a lot of people, you know, <laughs> ironically on, on this vacation thing, um, I was talking to a buddy of mine who, who went, they went down with us on the vacation mm-hmm. and he is an executive with a manufacturing company. Okay. And they are based, I, will, I won't mm-hmm. give any states or anything like that just because I don't want to get in trouble, but sure. they're, they're based in rural 
parts of um, certain low income states. Okay. okay. Um, they cannot find a work pool that will work 12 months a year. Mm. People want to work nine months a year because it will cap them out and they miss their three months of a quote unquote government draw. Wow. What's wrong with that? Yeah. That's, no. that's a big problem. I, no. I have to work 12 months a year. Yeah. There's no choice in that. Yeah. So there needs to be an incentive to work instead of a. It's called living. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Be- because we, we, our safety net has now become 10 safety nets yeah, and become true. much broader. And uh, people do not value the fact that, guess what? If you don't go out and chop your own wood and heat your own space or, mm-hmm. you know, go hunt and kill or grow your own food, people don't, people don't yeah. appreciate that. They, they automatically know that there's going to be a hand out there to help. Yeah. And, well, and, and that money could go to way more valuable things. Absolutely. You know, and, and being part of the foster care system, you look at, and, and again, we don't do this for the money. It's not a money issue. It's not, hey, we want to check. Please understand that that's not the case. But if you look at how much it costs the government to um, to board a, a child for a day, it's significantly more to board your dog for the day versus the government paying to, to house a kid for the day. So it's, it you know... That money could be used to go for much more effective processes and and organizations for you just to sit there and do nothing. It's frustrating. Completely frustrating. It's very frustrating. Also, it's, no, absolutely. It's very yeah. frustrating. I, mean, I I won't give details in this, but in my line of work, I had someone apply for a, motor, you know, for a motorcycle the other day, and their stated source of income was due to um, them being foster parents. Oh wow! To, mm. the, to the tune of six grand a month. That that doesn't add up. I'll tell you that right now. There's no way I, that's I, happening. I, but well, I mean, she did have more than six kids. That you you're not supposed to have more than six kids. I How's that happening? I don't know. I, don't, I have no clue. <laughs> I just I asked her. I said, "Ma'am, I have to ask." But yeah, you know, you, your proof of income is you're stating that you earn six grand a month. She goes, "Well, I have foster kids." There's, that's not happening. <sighs> I'm just telling you that ain't happening. All right. Well, I don't know what, but. But even if it's cut in half, yeah. Think think how much. I, I mean, I'm not saying that we don't allocate money to people that that open their homes and hearts to kids. But um, like you said, though, how much the government is actually paying mm-hmm. people to house house kids? Yeah, yeah. And there's so many other avenues we could go down with this. Yeah. So and but you know, once again, the. Uh, wait till the Democratic Party dwindles down to six six contenders. I mean, yeah, it is it'll be, be interesting. It's gonna be free fest. It's gonna be interesting. Um, free yeah. food, free weed, yeah. free cars. I mean, what are, free education? I mean, we're gonna have a we're gonna have an educated populace of you know three hundred million people with degrees in in various subjects that you cannot use. I mean, yeah. but hey, it's free. Hey, it's free. If you are in the market for a high-quality cigar for a very reasonable price, you must check out Watchman Cigars. Watchman Cigars is a family-owned business that puts the customer first with the best customer service in the business. Watchman Cigars offers the Habano for a full, spicy flavor, the Connecticut for a mild, easy-to-smoke option, and the Maduro for a strong, powerful experience. They even do specialty blends and partner with you to provide a custom exclusive line just for you. Watchman Cigars has all your cigar needs. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram at Watchman Cigars 1991 or email Leon directly at Watchman underscore cigars at yahoo.com. That's Watchman underscore cigars at yahoo.com or check out the sponsor section of our website. Speaking of going down the toilet... Um, Our show? <laughs> no, no. AOC talks about toilet water. You wanted to bring that up? Yeah. So this week in AOC, um, man, she is a she's a laugh a minute. So AOC <laughs> visited a de- detention center on one of her borders and claims that she saw um, uh, a, de- a detainee. I guess that's probably the most politically correct way to put it. Now, a detainee has um, saw her drinking water. Out of a toilet, and that uh, also, I guess, a, a CBP or a border patrol agent was um, uh, ordering them to drink from the toilet. Mm. So um, she was, of course, upset with this and and tweeted about this and kind of gave a 
half-assed uh, TV interview where when she was asked a question, she rolled up her window and the person in the uh, government supplied, uh, I think it was an Audi SUV, <laughs> uh, speeds off. Wow. <clears throat> so um, number one, and also this is kind of on the backs of uh, the Trump administration, which – or the Trump administration, but just the administration and having to go forth a, a judge the other day with the with the lack of soap and toothpaste, mm-hmm. or toothbrushes. Right. Um, now, a little context, the attorney that was quoted um, in front of these judges is actually an Obama appointee to the Department mm-hmm. of Justice. You know, I hope people realize once a new administration takes over, we have so many government employees. This, mm-hmm. I mean, this in government employees, hundreds of thousands of people. So it's not like you have an incoming president from a different party and they go in and just mass fire right. um, people that do not agree with them. I mean, it, pe- these people stay in place for years, multiple administrations. You know, a lot of these people don't care if you're – a lot of these people are career people, so they don't care if it's a Republican right. or Democrat. Sure. They just want their job. They just want their job, yeah. So th- this is an example of that. That attorney was an Obama appointee. Um, she's also been under fire for several years. The lawsuit was actually br- brought up in 2016 with some mismanagement of mm. um, detention centers. So I think we should rewind a little bit. Detention centers on the border have been around for years. Okay, these aren't mm-hmm. something new. These are something that did not, did not come up in 2017 when when Donald Trump took office. These are something that has th- these are buildings that have been um, there for years. Okay, um, I I've heard people in some of the religious community talk about these are concentration camps. Um, I'm pretty sure that you can't compare those two. I think AOC AOC also commented on that. I think we talked about that last yeah. week. So um, these aren't concentration camps because I'm pretty sure the Jews didn't voluntarily walk into Auschwitz uh, or Buchenwald or wherever, you mm-hmm. know, the, the, all these other camps. So I'm pretty sure that the the the, uh, the people from South America are not exactly voluntarily uh, walking into these. Or they're voluntarily walking into these facilities. They're not, they're not just being like mass rounded up in, in another part of the country and brought in. So the argument to that is they are being forced to come here because their country is so bad. No one forces anyone. People can make change. Just like you see, uh, you'll have a depressed community and you have a leader stand up and says, you know what? No more. I'm going to change this. But you've also seen other like drug cartels say, we're going to own the city mm-hmm. and wipe out everybody that doesn't sure. agree with them. The, once again, it's it, you're not being forced, I, and I'm I'm a I love humanity. I, d- I don't want to see anyone live in squalor. Right. But you have across the world, you have numer- you have more countries that are that are governed by despots than you do uh, people that actually have the betterment or the mind of you know the people behind them. I mean, look at look at the continent of Africa. How many actual actual countries there do you have that actually um, actually care about progress and in the people? Hmm. Probably less than less than half right, half yeah. a handful. <clears throat> South America is lined with socialism. Nicaragua, El Salvador, uh, Guatemala, Venezuela, all these countries are just are, you know, a lot of El Salvador just actually had a change presidency. But you you have a lot of these countries that are just aligned in their political thought of socialism and it is nothing but an overreaching government and very little freedoms for the people. So I, mm-hmm. as a father, I can understand trying to take my kid to another country okay. to, to better. I, I completely understand that. But um, it's it's funny that how some of these GD, some of the country's GDPs, if the countries are so bad, everyone would leave, right? Mm-hmm. Why, why is these countries GDP or gross domestic product? A lot of it is actually money that's being earned here and being sent back to those countries. Mm-hmm. Because people are obviously staying there, a yeah. lot of these people okay. actually, a lot of these people, people actually come here, work for a number of years, save up enough money, and actually go back home. So if the countries are that bad, and a lot, I, you know, I had I had people that were not undocumented that used to work for me mm-hmm. for a corporation that I worked for, mm-hmm. and a lot of these people would work here for ten years, save up enough money, move back and retire, and can live mm-hmm. like kings. So if the countries are so bad. Then why why do we have uh, money that's being left leaving our shores going back and being stored in banks that are these to home countries? Hmm. And think about that. But going back to the toilet water, yeah. <laughs> well, um, not defending detention centers because I think um, I would do a little different method of of of, of 
detaining people. But um, I would build a giant Chick Fil A in a playground. That's so probably that. the most ingenious thing I've heard <laughs> out of your mouth today. But no, um, you know, it's hard to house when you have an influx of over one hundred fifteen thousand people at the border in yeah. a month. I mean, you're, you're looking. I mean, you're, you're looking. The population of some some of the most big, some of the most moderate sized cities in America, just coming to the border. Yeah, and then you're having yeah. you're, then you're having to vet these people if they're actually legit, not legit. Do they have an asylum claim? The the kid that they're told the kid they have in tow. Did they buy this kid? Did they actually is this, is this kid part of their DNA or whatever? I mean, you yeah. have so many facets. So um, for uh, it's very shameful that AOC go down there and actually. Number one, I don't think this happened. I don't think the whole toilet water thing happened I, because there's no proof. There's contradictory stories from the other side, also from the, from the border patrol. And these board, like I said, these border patrol are not Donald Trump's uh, brown shirts from Germany. These are guys that have been career mm-hmm. border patrol, so they're they're contradicting yeah. the story. So from what I've from what I've heard, it was a portable, potable uh, water container that was by the toilet. That's where you got your water from. I think it would do that and flush the toilet. Same well, actually, what I've also seen also is that the, um, these detention centers actually have a three-in-one unit where you have a bowl okay. to use the bathroom. Yeah. Up on top, you have a sink with two faucets for hot and water, but you also have a third spout, which is actually for water. Right, right, right. It was all connected into like one all, thing. All, you know, it's like yeah. an Ikea version for a small, <laughs> small apartment. So, um so I'm not, I'm not sure if she's using hyperbole and saying that they're drinking from the mm-hmm. toilet. Well, it literally just means it's one unit. Right. But she doesn't address it that way. So um, do you look at the pictures and and say that's unbelievable of what's happening there? Oh, absolutely. But see, we've encouraged it. We've encouraged it for so many years. Sure. Bring, you know, look at California. California just unanimously... unanimously um, I'm sorry, the, the government there has just unanimously voted to put health care for illegals there. What mm-hmm. does that say? Right. That says, welcome right. come to California. Right. I mean, honestly, if you're from yeah. a third world country and you see that on your on your news form, yeah. you're going to go to California because sure. you know you can get health care. Yeah. Um, when you see New York says, we will not arrest, you know, the, the sheriff of Charlotte, Mecklenburg County says, and here in North Carolina says that he will not uh, inform ICE of any detainees that he may that have questionable immigration status. Mm. When you say things like this, you, you it's an open invitation. Yeah, yep. I'm not, and I'm not. So I have four godchildren from from the from the, from Hispanic employees I've had, so I I, I value that relationship. Mm. But when you have a, a, when you have a chief that says, um, "We will not question your immigration status," and Charlotte right now is in a in a a crime wave right now. We've had more murders. We've ha- also had increased robberies, thefts, car robberies, burglaries. Is there any Even correlation? housing is being, is very hard to come by at this point. <clears throat> oh, but, but yeah, I don't understand that, but I'm saying just even the crime. Right. No, I'm it, saying. It, we've had a spike in crime. Is there any correlation between that and us being a sanctuary city here? I don't know. I mean. But, you know, we have, you know, honestly, and I, I love how, um, I love how right now this is kind of an interesting time in the the communities of faith mm-hmm. because you have yeah. the extreme communities of faith who um, make all the pretty uh, Instagram, social media, <laughs> Facebook posts about, you know, what, what would Jesus do? Right. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. But guess what? Their, their sanctuaries are still fully empty Monday through Saturday. Mm-hmm. Yep. You want to solve an undocumented illegal alien problem at the border? Open your sanctuaries. Go help out. We don't do that. Yeah. We, no. we, we would rather we would rather place the onus, the blame on our, our new demigod called government. And it just sure. is absolutely infuriating. Yeah. But um, you know, I'm glad to see <laughs> come back to AOC. I'm glad to see there's actually someone who's actually going to run for her seat. Because oh I, really? Because I, she doesn't deserve, she doesn't deserve the toilet water out of that oh, uh, out, of, out of that that unit in Texas. If she went and visit, she is nothing but mm-hmm. a con artist. She is the Reverend um, Jackson, Reverend Sharpton, and I use that term Reverend very loosely mm-hmm. of her generation. She is nothing but a provocateur 
who is trying to incite rage due to um, what she thinks is a perception of the social justice uh, voters out there for her, her district. Yeah. And on the flip side of that, though, Christians are going to do the same thing. You know, they're going to be, oh, they're going to come. And, and I'm not specifically saying you um, in your example that you had earlier, but they're going to come rape our women and, and, you know, kill our children. Like, I think that's, they a, just I think go, that's a different. I think, like I said, I think you have to partition the community of faith. You're going to have some people that are um, who you have, you have the people that um, in the, the communities of faith, you have people that either a, a the red, white, and blue mm-hmm. is their God. Sure. Jesus yeah. is second. Yep. Okay. Nothing wrong with being patriotic. I love this country. Mm-hmm. Thank God. Blessed to be here. Yeah. But you have those mm-hmm. who, um, they wrap the also, Bible around the flag. Exactly. And they'll also use that. Um, these people are murderers, drug dealers. Yeah. 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 Right. Like I know some good people that are undocumented. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I fully am compassionate towards that, but, um, we have, to, we have to, um, revamp our, our entry system here. 100% okay. agree. Um, because, <laughs> And then you have the other side of the faith community who says, you know, I'll just let them in, open borders. Right. And um, we can't operate that way. You would not leave the the lock off your house. You know, right. you, you work hard, you use the fruits of your labor to go out and buy things. Mm. You would not take the lock off your house because you value the items that's inside your four walls. Sure. You, val- in va- you, you value your personal life. You also value the, value the TV that you watch or the, you know, your collection of um, garbage pile kits, whatever it may be, you <laughs> sure. value that. You don't yeah. want someone to take it away. So, I mean, w- <laughs> you have those two extremes of the of the of the communities of faith, and no one wants to do anything. Yeah, and and we are, we're paralyzed. We, we get locked up. Of, of which way do we go? Both sides make arguments, and like we said the other day with abortion, like you're either want you're for or against, and there's not a mediocre like, hey, let's just talk about this and try to figure out a solution. Mm. Um, and I think it's another but the one. Pro- of those but the problem is there issues. is no solution. There is no solution to this that would make all sides happy. <laughs> like abortion. Well, I'm just you, talking you, about I, immigration. I know, but I'm saying go with abortion. What right. middle ground could you have? Well, I mean, would the pro lifes ever go? Hey, oh, yeah, we're okay with abortion up until three months. Sure. Or, and, I mean, you know, or, you know, pro-choice would be like, oh, yeah, we're good with that. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, it's up to six months. Yeah. I mean, there's no um, there's no common ground you can meet there. Just I, like, I think abortion is different than immigration. I think you can have a middle ground with immigration. I, I don't think that you can look at America legitimately and say, well, we're not going to let immigrants in. I mean, we, that, that's just, that's our history. I don't, I don't even, even the people that are anti illegal immigration don't say that. I, I, I don't, I, I personally, I know some extreme people in the Biden community, the people that hmm. really guns, God, red, white, and blue, like n- let nobody in. No, I don't know anybody. I'm saying I know some extreme people who are, I mean, even borderline, possibly violent anti-immigration. Okay. Mm -hmm. And none of them are saying don't let anyone in. Okay. All right. I mean, I've never heard that even to the extreme, 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 extreme part of anti-immigration. I've never heard. Right. Don't let anyone in. That's what I'm saying. Like, so I think there's some middle ground that you can have in in between that. Yeah, but, But the problem is we have no solution of what to do with them before we let them in, you know? Right. No, I mean, if if they're hitting their wall, hitting our wall and saying we plead amnesty, what do you do? I mean, you have to bring them in. You have to put them in a facility in which you can figure out what's going on to give them uh, access to, to the country. It's the same thing, and this is a horrible um, comparison, but even in Handmaid's Tale, like there's a process that you go through if, if, you, if you go to another country. And, you, you know, it's... There, there has to be the process. And I think the issue is the process is expensive. It's long. It's uh, tedious. It's redundant on a lot of the things. And it's hard to, to find birth certificates out of people that may not have birth certificates when they flee. So, I mean, it's a long process, but how do we make that faster, cheaper, easier? And I think most people would agree that that we're okay if we have a process to get them to get people in. See, I don't think so. No, I, I, I don't think people. I don't think people in the extreme anti extreme immigrate pro immigration 
care that there's a process. They don't believe there should be a process okay. at all. They should believe they should be walk across the border and say, hello. set up camp and be like, hello, I'm here. Okay. Not no assimilation. We, we curtail our systems to meet their needs. Mm. And I mean, just, and this is not my words. This is like things that you can actually verify by people that take, how many candidates we have running for Democratic Party now? What? 29 of them, yeah. take 28 of them and 28 of them say that you yeah, have unfettered immigration. Hmm. We, we shouldn't, there, there should be no checks. Yeah. Well, and you, and you wonder, is it, is it, are they just swinging so far left because the right went so far right? They're like, well, Oh, that, well, let's it, catch up. <laughs> we have, but, but, but we haven't gone too far right because you know, we, we well, haven't gone smaller government. We haven't gone less spending. We haven't gone. Uh, I mean, the only thing we have is not, implementing new wars, which is great. Right. I mean, um, but there's a lot of things that traditionally we haven't done that what people consider far right. Yeah, but people will look at Trump mm-hmm. and say, well, he's far right, or he's he's the Republican Party that is, they say small government because of the, uh, you know, uh, regulations that he's trying to cut and all that kind of stuff. He's not really a small government, um, obviously, but people will look at Trump and and picture him as right wing because that's the feeling, right, of the Republican Party. They're so far right at this point, and I think that the the Democrats are saying well, we're going to swing f- so far left because the feeling is we're 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 right on the right side. Is that not your take? Well, far right is, I mean, anything left of. No, I don't want free education. That's far right. Right. Yeah. I, no, I don't want unvetted illegal immigration. Then you're far right. Right. No, I that's don't what want. I'm saying. Yeah, that's, that's the feeling. That is. Yeah, that's far right. Now. That we're if so you, far right. If you don't cater to the extreme mm-hmm. fringes of left society where we want the government to actually, actually take everything and manage everybody's lives, then you're far right. Yeah. I mean, that's the point where we are now. I mean, if you, it's funny reading some of these extreme left um, blogs I've, I've been diving into because literally, I mean, everyone should make the same money. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, just we should have the same housing. We, I mean, we've gone down this path several times in history, but we just failed to learn from it. But anyway, so that's, uh, yeah, that's kind of where we're at. Yeah. Goodness. Well, then we got, we got... <laughs> They will be met with fire, fury, and frankly, power. The la- <laughs> we'll see how everything turns out on the Democratic national debate. All right, let's go into not s- good. <laughs> it'll be fun. Can we both agree? At least it'll be fun to watch the process. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm gonna start watching when they get dwindled down to at least eighteen. Right, where you can <laughs> so, have it all in one night. <laughs> maybe yeah, yeah, not a two night event. Sure. Uh, so let's talk about vacation. We um, we just got back from vacation. Do you have highlights? Things you want to talk about? Things you want to share? Um, so we, my family and I, um, were joined with another family that we knew in Tennessee when we were neighbors. So we've mm-hmm. kind of remained close and just a little context. We're I'm actually going to have. Uh, the dad on, um, he has an amazing story. Oh, cool. And, uh, he's going to come on sometime in the future. I can't nail down a week yet. But, uh, yeah, sometime in the future, before 2021. There um, go. Goals, baby. Yeah, goals. So, uh, anyway, they invite us, or they came down with us. And um, my oldest daughter and their daughter uh, started kindergarten together. Oh, so wow. They, they've been BFFs. Wow. Forever. So, they... Um, the, you know, they went for probably a period of five years. I actually talking to each other, but you know, when they get back together, mm-hmm. it's just like you know, yep. peanut butter and jelly. Sure. Uh, my daughter is biracial. Their daughter's white. And they, from day one, they call themselves twins. <laughs> Twinsies. And I love that. Yeah. That's, that's that makes me that's feel, cool. that makes, that warms my heart like Buffalo Trace. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah. So, uh, so we, we've kind of, our, our families have merged together due to their, our, their, our girl's friendship. So, mm-hmm. so we go down to St. Petersburg, Florida. Wow. Why we ended up in St. St. Petersburg, yeah. I'm not entirely sure of that. Okay. I think we just wanted to be somewhere on the Gulf coast. Yeah. Um, but you know, we found this amazing house on Airbnb. Nice. So that, I think that kind of has more influence in it. <laughs> sure. It's always good when you can find like a really cool place to stay. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, so, yeah. I mean, I, and the features, I'll, I'll kind of give you the, the amenities. Now, this is not Tullamore Dew, uh, Tim's yeah, tiny no, house. Yeah. No. I mean, that, that sounds like a fantastic. It looks deal. awesome, yeah. right? 
So, um, um, it's, you know, St. Pete is right on the Gulf side. It's um, kind of a unique part of Florida where the continental shelf actually doesn't go out to 40 miles. I mean, hmm. you're, your um, lowest point in the seafloor may only be like 40, 50 feet. So it's not, not too terribly deep. not going to get attacked deep. by sharks. Or I maybe. Think, I think the sharks are too lazy to come up in there. Yeah. But anyway, so uh, this house has a pool, and we uh, we actually overlook the bay. Oh, know, wow. So Saint, it, where we're at in St. Pete, we can actually see Tampa Bay. Okay. Um, granted, Tampa Bay is probably, you know, 20 miles away. Holy Across cow. the ocean. But, you know, you have this, this saltwater bay. Ooh. So we have this amazing pool, um, which... I had it timed exactly right at five eighteen. Is actually fully fully shaded for my my pasty. Um, <laughs> five eighteen in the morning. Five eighteen in the afternoon. Okay, it's fully shaded. Okay, so um, for my pasty white, um, you can fill in the blank. But yeah. So we we had that pool. We had this dock um, that we could fish off of, and wow. I mean, just secluded, quiet community. Wow. So. Um, I think that's kind of what sealed the deal. Sure. It's just an amazing house, amazing amazing sunrise. Um, go out and just have a coffee in the mm. morning, watch the sunrise in 123-degree heat. Um, <laughs> and it's something about, you know, the humidity. And the humidity when you're around the salt water. Yeah. I mean, you can shower, walk outside. It just sticks to you. Oh, yeah. It cleans it's to awful. You. So, um, yes, yeah, so we have this amazing house, um, just a kind of cool. Nothing really, like, adventurous around there, but mm. it, it was okay with us because we all just wanted to hang out and swim and yeah. eat f- nasty food and, you know, or bad food bad for you and just <laughs> do nothing but hang out. So, um, the only, I mean, you know, we fished, we got mm-hmm. to kind of, we got to became regulars at the local bait shop just okay. because, you know, we go in and buy our fresh Pick bait every some morning. Yeah. Worms. No, shrimp. Okay. And of course their bait shrimp is what we would eat, eat here in the restaurants. Which sure. Is ironic, of course. You know. Yeah. So, um, you know, we we kind of became a regular there at the bait shop there. Um, Wasn't sissies. <laughs> no, Mast- Masties and St. Pete. Okay. I, I, shout out to those guys. They helped us out with uh, um, making our fishing trip, fishing a little bit more um, <laughs> enjoyable off the dock. Nice. Uh, we did go uh, inland sea fishing one day with the girls, and uh, we caught quite a few fish. It was, I mean, it was fun. Yeah. You know, it was different than deep sea fishing. You're not going out for these big sporty fish, but we did, did go out with these local small inland creatures or whatever. So it was fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the the most interesting thing that I think um, I can say, and I, I actually have another guest coming on to kind of, oh, wow. who's from the community, um, uh, the tail end of June, or June was what, Pride Month, I guess. Mm-hmm. So um, St. Pete is uh, probably the most pri- our LGBTQ plus community mm-hmm. out there um, in Florida. Okay. Which I could care less. I mean, that sure. doesn't affect my daily life. So, um, we happen to we happen to go down and have an adults' night for dinner or whatever one night. And we walk into a restaurant uh-huh. and um, every type of uh, every type of scenario you could think of. I mean, okay. you had straight families, gay families. Mm-hmm. Who cares? I, I just want, I just wanted a cheeseburger. Right yeah, here. you don't. Um, so we sit down and the owner comes over and um, starts talking to me. Mm-hmm. And in being in the restaurant business for many years, I'm just kind of inquisitive. And so we start talking and stuff. And I'm like, I just have a question because St. Pete is just lit up with pride flags yep. everywhere. Pride flags, transgender flags, pansexual flags, peanut butter, jelly flags, mm-hmm. whatever flag that floats your boat. Biscuit gravy. Mm. God bless a bear. What would that even look like? Heaven. Oh. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> I'm going to go home and draw this. Now. <laughs> but um, on so the, on the next episode of us telling Gustav. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so I had to ask the owner. I was like, just out of curiosity, what happens if you don't fly your pride flag? Ooh. He goes, we get boycotted. Really? Yeah. And wow. I was like, that's interesting. Tolerance doesn't exceed, extend to the, uh, he goes, no, it doesn't. Mm. He goes, we have to fly it every year. Interesting. So I have I have a buddy of mine who is a, you know part of the LGBT community, married to, um, I married to his husband for mm-hmm. many years. Great couple, great friends. I grew up in I grew up in, actually from kindergarten with this guy. So he's going to come on oh, and nice. actually talk about how the pride community has shifted. Oh wow! And over the past few years. So, um, but that was one of the most interesting conversations I've had probably while while being down there is just mm-hmm. the, the fact that um, if you don't f- just fall head into the momentum of what 
the current culture is down there. Yeah. You might as well just shut uh, shut uh, shut up shop for that month or whatever mm-hmm. period it is. Interesting. So, so tell me about your vacation. I guess. Um, man, that that is interesting. I can't wait to have have them on. Um, yeah, it was it was good. We had a a twofer uh, on that. It was we went down for uh, my adopted mom's wedding. She got uh, married, um, and just some background on on the situation. I was a youth pastor at this church. It was my first part-time gig and uh, second part-time gig. I'm sorry. And uh, she was uh, the the lady that was in charge of keeping control of the youth pastor. Mm. So the lady that would like, eh, I don't think this is a good idea. <laughs> you know, like when I wanted to do slip and slide with slime and, you know, peanut butter, probably not the best That's idea. It's a horrible to do. mix. Yeah. No, it, it, you know. You're young. You're stupid. You try things. Um, so she was speaking a, of peanut butter. Yeah, I tried the peanut butter and a jelly all in one jar this weekend. Oh wait, the the one the that's goober. like yes. Oh man, delicious! This is, really, delicious. I am shocked. I'm a purist. Yeah, we talked about this before. I don't know if it's because I was hangry. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure of the content. Or context, but uh-huh. I, I'm, I but I thoroughly enjoyed really? the jar, probably half a jar of okay. Smucker's Goober. I'm taking a break, uh, calling a timeout. So, how did you get the ratio of jelly and peanut butter? Because it look it doesn't look like it's going to be a good good ratio. I mix the half, the top half. You together. just mix it together. Mix it together. Okay, so you're not trying to like just dig it out with a spoon. No, I mixed it. You mix it mm-hmm. and then put it on your, and you liked it. I. Wow. I thoroughly enjoyed it. How about it? it? Okay. I'm sorry. Go back. <laughs> so um, my adopted mom, she, she was she was in charge of keeping the youth pastor in check. Um, we formed a relationship every time that my uh, now wife, uh, then girlfriend, would come visit. She would stay with her. We just, we, we became so very close. And so she, um, she was getting married, uh, had the honor of walking her down the aisle. So that was really cool. Had to buy a pink shirt. Um, so you walked your, you walked Brenda down the aisle. I did. Yeah. That's awesome. Isn't that cool? Such a sweet lady she is. Too. She is. Uh, you wrote her, she, <laughs> let, me, let me go back a little bit. You wrote her around on your motorcycle, yeah, yeah. uh, when she came up to visit, uh, last time. But you know, and that was, I, I was kind of <laughs> a little, con, a little context. Here, this is where we devolve into 12 year old kids. Again. Sure. Yeah. But um, no. Uh, By the con- way, side note: I was on, I was in uh, therapy today, and oh. my my therapist kept saying the word "suck," and I was like, "I'm out." <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> but no, I was a little nervous about coming over and picking her up on the motorcycle mm. just because Concord was in the midst of the eighteen month, um, you know, road fixture. Yeah, tenth of a mile road fixture, <laughs> so. tearing up the road. I was a little I was a little nervous about that. Yeah, because she ended up having a great time. Yeah, and um. That was the first time she had rode a motorcycle, mm. ridden on a motorcycle in quite a few years yeah. due to her um, husband passing. Mm-hmm. And that, I mean, what a, what a blessing it was to be able to, to be that vessel of that. So. Yeah. Yeah. She had a great time with that. And uh, so it was, it was really special to be able to do that. Again, I had to buy a pink shirt. I'm not thrilled about that part. The, the what wedding. color pink though? Baby pink, pale pink, bright pink. I mean. It was, it was medium pink. It was like yeah. not salmon. I won't, it was, it was. Less than Pepto Bismol pink. As long as it's not like Miami Vice eighties. Right. Pink. No, it wasn't that bad. Okay. Um, so uh, did that, and then when we left there, we're going to Chicago. Uh, my wife and I have never been to Chicago together. Uh, we've been at separate times, but we, and I was a teenager when that happened, so not a whole lot of fun things that you can do. My wife, you were talking about the place to stay is kind of what sealed the deal. When she was making plans, we booked the Indigo or the Ivy Boutique Hotel, Mm -hmm. which you're like, ooh, fancy. Once it says boutique on it. Yeah, it says boutique, and you're like, this is going to be fancy. This is going to be right in the middle of downtown Chicago. Yeah, if they added boutique on the end of Holiday and Express. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'd be all about it. Yeah. Yeah, Um, which I've I've come to figure out the boutique means you you have all of your furniture um, about a half inch from the floor. Is really kind of what what that feng what shua, that means. Feng shua. Yeah, you, you've got the feng shui going. You've got uh, your bed thirty six uh, inches from the floor. Like it just you got to crawl. You got to crawl out of everything. Right. Or roll um, over. So the first night, um, 
we have a good time. We just, we stroll into town. We meet uh, one of my friends, my coworkers. We explore this haunted Bachelor's Grove cemetery. Mm. Uh, I saw it on the Discovery Channel around Halloween. They're like, oh, this is the most haunted place ever. In the galaxy. Uh, in, in the most haunted cemetery. And I expect this giant cemetery. Mm. And you go in and it's like maybe three acres. If that, it's just tiny. It's a tiny little thing. You call yourself a cemetery. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those things. You're like, there's 86 people that were buried there. Like, oh, wow. On three acres? Holy crap. <laughs> right, That's... right. It was, it was spread they, out. They, everybody had their own plot. That right. was great. Yeah, uh, and one of the, the haunted things was there was an overpass close to the cemetery, and mm. what they would say is uh, the the uh, the mob would dump people uh... into this this. Uh, uh, lake uh, that was there, uh, the pond. What made, so, it, what, it made, what made it creepy was a speaker that was on the ooh, ooh, ooh. channel on Sirius and then uh, the fog machine. That's sure. what made it spooky. There was a, a group that was there that was doing ghost investigations with a look to be a repurposed, uh, uh, um, what are those? Uh, Toaster? No. Just the recorder, record players. Okay. It looked like a repurposed record player um, that had stuff on it. I was like, what? Mirror, mirror, yeah, mirror. I was like, this is weird. Um, so we, we did that. We got it. We enjoyed uh, some some Italian beef and some hot dogs. We played two live crews in reverse. <laughs> Puffy, I think we can hear you. Or uh, B- Biggie. Me? So, hmm. mm, Yeah. Um, so we did that. Um, but we go in that, that night sleep in our four inches off the ground uh, bed. Mm. The next day I decide, hey, I'm going to put on my socks, which I do every day. But because it's so low, I reached to put on my sock and I pulled my back muscle. Oh, geez. <laughs> that, that night or that morning. And man, I'm so old because it hurt the entire time. We had to to walk to most places uh, or, or e- even Uber or lift, and every time we'd hit a bump or a pothole, mm. man, it would hit in my back. We'd be on the, the bus tour where, you Probably know. pulls your sciatic nerve. I, it, dude, it was awful. I realized I was so old. We decided we're going to go to Wrigley Stadium. Mm. Uh, I mean, you've got to when you're in Chicago. Oh, like, that, that's a dream of mine. I've, I've been, to, I've worked in Chicago before and never been to Wrigley. Really? Yeah. Of course, times I've worked there have been like you know, 30 below degrees, you know, yeah. below zero. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Um, can I tell you that um, whatever section you decide to buy your ticket at, make sure you're 120 pounds or less because <laughs> those are the tightest seats. Probably the aisles are too, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, the the steps down aren't aren't even, so yeah. you know, there's no handrails. Hmm. So I was pretty convinced I was going to fall down with my sciatic nerve back. Right. Uh, then you get to the seat and you're like, hey, buddy. I'm looking at that thing saying that's not going to work. Ain't having a cab. No. So I I put my butt in there like I was a sausage and then <laughs> like got stuck. Uh, luckily, the people that were uh, next to my wife didn't show up. So we had we could mm. put a space in there and and we had to ride the train in. And the I'm ill. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. And then I had to oh, walk. No. I was tired, grumpy. We got there the fourth inning and we left at the the end of the seventh. I was like, I'm done. I could Chicago Chicago is an amazing city. I I, I thoroughly enjoy yes. it. Um I mean now you kind of enter there at your own peril because mm. you, I mean you 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 have a pretty good ratio of being shot or mugged. I or didn't feel unsafe. Maybe I was just, you know, crazy. Well, where but, you were also. Right. I yeah. mean we were downtown. Yeah. Downtown. Um Miracle Mile, downtown. Yeah. You know, those aren't the bad, bad places. Sure. But, you know, Chicago has a lot of crime. I mean, yeah, no doubt. Um but Chicago is an amazing city. Mm-hmm. Food, sure, culture, yeah, um, history. I mean, yep. it, it's beautiful. Architecture was gorgeous. But you know, with the rivers and stuff coming yeah. through, it is beautiful. Yeah, it's, I, I, it's it's a shame that it's taken a lot of hits over the past few years. Mm-hmm. I mean, but it's an amazing city. Yeah, I mean, God, the food alone. I mean, I, <laughs> I would go there just to eat three meals a day for a week. Yeah, wildfire. We ate at. Um, uh, the pizza, not Gordano's. It was a different pizza place that was fantastic. Um, Luminati's, right? Luminati's. Yeah. yeah, we went there, and that was that was great. Um, man, we just had some really good food as well, just all over the places. I mean, you could you could eat there twenty one meals. I'm talking breakfast, lunch, mm-hmm. and dinner for a week, and not touch 
the greatest Italian restaurants in the country. Yeah. Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah. Um, so we did it at Wrigley, had had a good time with that. Then the main reason why we went was, and I mentioned this before, we didn't get to go to Hamilton when it was here uh, in, in Charlotte. So um, we decided we're going to, we're going to hit it up uh, in Chicago. How does a bastard or have you son of a seen anything about Hamilton? Scotsman um, the only thing I've seen about Hamilton is that, uh, you remember they, they staged a protest against Pence. Oh, okay. That's, uh, that's the only thing. Gotcha. Dude, I loved, I love this, this musical. I, I'm not a musical guy. I'm not either. Yeah. But, but I mean, here, here's the, the intro. We'll probably get sued, but that's okay. They placed him in charge of a trading charter. And every day while slaves were being slaughtered and carted away Across the waves he struggled and kept his guard up Inside he was longing for like something so much. to be a part of The brother was ready to beg, steal, borrow, or barter Then a hurricane came and devastation rained A man saw his future drip, dripping down the train Put a pencil to his temple, connected it to his brain And he wrote his first refrain, a testament to his pain the word got around and said this kid is insane, man. Took up a collection just to send him to the mainland. Get your education, don't forget from whence you came. And the world's gonna know your name. What's your name, man? Alexander Hamilton. My name is Alexander Hamilton. And there's a million things I haven't done. But just you wait, just you. So it's it, it like it's it's really well written, really well done. There's a lot of his, historical like accuracies that it's, it's it's true, but it's all done in like a hip hop like really upbeat uh, and all kinds of music. Um, funny. It was just really creative. Um, I, I can't give it enough, and I'm probably like a decade late <laughs> to this. But I, I have no clue when it came out. I was shocked at how uh, great it was. I'm going to wait till they uh, they do it at the middle school middle school play for my kid because <laughs> I don't want to pay for the tickets. The price you had to pay for those tickets, uh, so. and they weren't bad. We did a matinee. Um, okay. I mean, they were they were more than. I probably would have paid, but we're going to, my, it's going to be in Atlanta uh, in April and we're going to go to that. It's going to come to Charlotte. We're going to, I mean. Why would you go to more than once? Why would you see it? Because it was so good. Oh, wow. There was a point at it and uh, Sketch texted me and, and asked how it was. I was like, there's a point where my wife and I were both crying. Mm. Uh, she, there's a love story involved That's into not, it. That, that doesn't take much. Uh, it doesn't. You. But uh, let me tell you the points at where okay. we, where we got uh, sad. There was um, a love story. We, if you look at the history and this is a spoiler alert, but not if you like look at history, uh, Hamilton's son dies. Um, so there was some of that. And so there was, she was crying at that. Uh, you look over at me and I'm, uh, weeping when the British leave America. Like that's, mm. those are two totally different places. But like when, when they, when they push the Britain back and they get on their ships, I'm like bawling. Cause it's, you know, getting close to July 4th. I'm like, Oh my gosh. Like, you know, all the stuff that these guys have went through to, to start this country yeah. really makes you help appreciate it. But, um, listen, I would tell you, go to YouTube, listen to the soundtrack. If you haven't already, it's, it's really, I think the music is actually really good. It gets stuck in your head and, and we loved it. So, had a great time with that. It was, Good. It was fantastic. So I did that and then went back to Kentucky for my grandma's 90th birthday. Um, she's such a sweetheart. We've had her on the show before. Uh, what a beautiful, beautiful lady, man. She finally, she turned 90. So 90 years old. How about you, man. Grams? Chocolate gravy, Velveeta cheeseburgers. They're coming. If I, if I do not get one... Or both. Mm-hmm. We, we will divorce as friends. Okay. Well, we'll make it happen. <laughs> the funniest uh, story of that, because Grandma has these one-liners that you're just like, what in the world? Uh, <laughs> my dad was talking about the mosquitoes uh, where he grew up in Hickman, uh, saying that they were so big that they could pick up a pig. Mm. And we're like, yeah, dad, that's silly. Ha, ha, ha. And then Grandma goes, no, really, it's that M- Mississippi water that's in them. <laughs> <laughs> like grandma, mosquitoes have Mississippi water. That's what allows you allows these mosquitoes to pick up a pig. Mm. I just thought, you know, grandma. But grandma's at the age where she could just say whatever. And oh. Just like whatever. 
grandma could wake up at eight o'clock in the morning and drink till eight o'clock at night. And you'd, you'd be like, you're, you're 90. Yeah. Do what yeah. you want. She, she doesn't drink. She will just eat sweets from eat a, eat a whole box of little Debbie's. Right. Yeah. Go through the drive through Krispy Kreme 12 times a day. <laughs> you're 90 years old. You deserve to do whatever you want. But it's the Mesqui- M- Mississippi water that's in them. I thought Explain that was Explain the ration, r- there ration is none. that. There is uh, none. There's none. She's like, Grandma, what does that mean? It's just the Mississippi. And then she'll trail off and go <laughs> do something else. She's like, well, how about you, Grams? <laughs> what adorable lady. Yeah, she you is. Know, she, she is, uh, for any of our new listeners who have not listened to the episode uh, where we had her on, she's the quintessential um, grandma that you wish you had. Yeah, she's, I mean, she's fantastic. The matriarch of a family type uh, would throw, I mean, as soon as you come over, even if you're there to drop off a letter, she'd have you a, a, make sure you stayed for a full breakfast or lunch or dinner. Sure. I mean, yeah. she's that grandma that everybody wishes they had. So, yeah. what yeah. an amazing lady. She's fantastic. So, happy birthday to you. Happy Grams. birthday, Grams, just in case you listen to us on the radio. <laughs> On the radio. All right. So uh, that was the that was our vacation. We had a good time. So thanks for uh, letting us have some time off. Um, we're really excited to, to be back in the saddle again. Hopefully next week we will have uh, Kentucky Sports Radio host Matt Jones with us. If not, you guys know why. Again, say your prayers for the uh, family of Jared Lorenzen. We would appreciate that. Yeah, go check us out on our Facebook page of Southern Fry Philosophy. Our website is southernfryphilosophy.com. You can also follow, uh, follow us on our, listen to us also on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, iHeart, Spotify, Podcast, Pocket Cast, pretty much any podcast app that you want to pull up a, 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 our, our podcast on. You can find us there. Just put in Southern Fry Philosophy. Um, however, however they have it, I've had a few listeners reach out to me and say they don't have a review section. So hmm. just give us a like, a subscribe, follow, however they have it written down there. That kind of helps push us out there. Um, if you're on iTunes, please go to the review section. Give us a review, four or five stars, one star, whatever. That's just how, it pushes, that's how it pushes, up, pushes us up in the algorithm of podcast. Um, you can check us out on the SFP radio uh, and on Instagram and Twitter's. Um, as I've been trying to close out for the last few months, just in honor of my um, uh, donor and donor's mother, um, if you have not yet, please make sure you register as an organ donor um, mm-hmm. because you can save so many lives, and you're not going to need it when you're not here. So yeah. um, I, I I love my donor family, Lisa Crouch. I love you guys. I love mm-hmm. uh, my uh, donor's uh, son, Salem, and I just, uh, I'm thankful for each day that I get to be here and just to even put this on a podcast, just to remind everybody is uh, also an awesome, awesome thing. So I appreciate that. Yeah. All right. Thanks for making me cry. Um, all right. Uh, again, <laughs> like I said, it don't take much. <laughs> <laughs> check out our Patreon link uh, on our website, southernfriedphilosophy.com. Appreciate you guys. And as always, keep looking up. Mm-hmm.